Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Qal Imam Ibn Kathir rahimahullah ta'ala Ibn Kathir he says We're still in the introduction, uh, the explanation of Imam Ibn Kathir. Qallahu ta'ala, wa man yakfru bihi min al-ahzab fa'l-naru ma'idahu. He quotes the verse of Allah from the Qur'an, Imam Ibn Kathir. He cites the verse of Allah. In the Quran, where Allah says the meaning in English, and whosoever disbelieves, whosoever disbelieves in it, and it here refers to the book of Allah, the Quran. Whosoever disbelieves in it, <clears throat> from amongst the different tribes, the different clans, <clears throat> the different parties of people, then the hellfire will be his that group, those people's abode. Then Ibn Kathir, he goes on to explain, after he quoted that verse of Allah, the man kafirah bil Qur'an. So this is how we understand and know that the pronoun in the verse, referring to the Qur'an, is that which Allah is mentioning in this verse, whosoever disbelieves in it, meaning whosoever disbelieves in the Qur'an. And we had mentioned before that the Qur'an is the last revelation. The last revelation that was sent to mankind, that which confirms all of the other previous revealed scriptures as they fought and they argued and they debated those of the prior nations. And the Qur'an has been sent as a glad tither, a glad, um, glad giver of glad tidings to the believers and a warning to those who disbelieve. Quran is also one of the names of the Quran is called Mahaiminan, Mahaimin, that which um, comes to uh, act as a defender, defender of the message. As people um, argue and debate and miss. Um, inform individuals about that which is concerning the creator of the heavens and the earth, then the Quran acts as a lawyer acts for an individual that is being slandered or being harmed. The lawyer defends it. Then the Quran acts as a defender for the previous scriptures. And that is because in the Quran, Allah has sent that which talks about all of the other nations, all of the other previous revealed books and it is a clarification of what really took place and what did not take place. So Ibn Kathir he says, so whoever disbelieves in the Quran <clears throat> from those individuals that have been mentioned, the different groups from the Arabs, the different pagans and those other people that challenge the Quran, then the fire is their abode. Meaning, if they die upon that, the fire is their abode. And then Kathir, he mentioned the Nasillahi Ta'ala. And this is by the text of God. This is by the revelation that God has sent down. This is not an issue of a man-made judgment. Rather, this is the judgment by the creator of those human beings that reject that Quran. And then Ibn Kathir, he goes on and he mentions, And it is just as a Lord of the worlds, Allah has said, the Lord of the worlds. Then he mentions the next verse. 
فَذَرَنِي مَنْ يُكَذِّبُ بِهَادَ الْحَدِيثِ So warn, so verily I warn, indeed I warn, he who disbelieves or rejects this speech. And here he calls the Qur'an speech as it is understood from the Muslims that the Qur'an is literally the speech of God that he sent down in the Arabic language. So that's that they read your home, men haythu la ya'lamun that we will seize them and punish them while they are having a good time from a angle or from a perspective of punishment that they would not know. Umli lahum. And here, umli lahum, Allah is saying that he will cast them in that fire forever. And then the Prophet ﷺ, he mentioned, Ibn Kathir says, وَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ And the Messenger of Allah, he mentioned a statement which is, بَإِثْتُ إِلَى الْأَحْمَارِ وَالْأَسْوَدِ That I was sent to the people of red skin and black skin. And normally when they say red skin, this means, um, when they say red skin, sometimes it means, um, those people that come from um, the Asian continents, sometimes it means um, the Arab, and other times um, they mention Abyad, which means white. And here, Ahmar refers to Arab, and Wal Aswat refers to black. And this doesn't mean that the Prophet was sent only to. Uh, those two nations. The rather it is shown is here to display that the Prophet was sent to more than just his people. And this was one of the ways of stating that he was sent to more than just his people by saying the color or the nationality Ahmar wa Aswat, that which is considered to be the red skinned people and the people of blackness as in Africa and those different nations. And that hadith has been collected, that saying has been collected in the collection of Imam Muslim, and it was narrated by the companion of the Prophet, Jabr ibn Abdullah, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So this is a confirmed statement from the Prophet that he was sent to the red and the black. And this was also collected by Imam Ahmed, as we had mentioned last class, from the Hadith of the Law, Ibn Abbas. And those two Hadith or Sahih, they are authentic, they have been verified on the Prophet. وَقَالَ Mujahid And Mujahid, which is the student of the Law, Ibn Abbas, he was the student of Abdullah Ibn Abbas, with Abdullah Ibn Abbas is the nephew of the Prophet. He is the son, one of the sons of the uncle of the prophet. His father's name was Abbas, and then he had a son. He named him Abdullah. So the boy's name was Abdullah, and he's Ibn Abbas, meaning the son of his father named Abbas. Abdullah ibn Abbas, which is one of the Sahaba, the companions of the prophet, he had a student named Mujahid, and Mujahid says, the meaning of the Prophet's statement, he was sent to the Ahmar wa Aswad, Ahmaru, red, Aswadu, black. Mujahid said, this means al insawal jinn, that the Prophet was sent to the mankind and the creation that is to be considered from the jinn kind. And that's where we left off the last class, and we continue from the point that we left off. Ibn Kathir, he, <coughs> he mentions, <coughs> he says, فَالْوَاجِبُ عَلَى الْعُلَمَاءِ الْكَشِفْ عَنْ مَعَانِ كَلَامَ اللَّهِ He said that there's an obligation upon the people of knowledge that they uncover the meanings to the speech of Allah, that they give elucidation to the Book of Allah, that they don't just leave the Quran the way Allah sent it, 
his words, but they give explanation, make it simple for the people to understand. And he is mentioned in this Ibn Kathir from the statement where he said that it is from the religion of the people that they have an understanding, that they gain understanding of the religion, that they gain understanding of it, meaning the book of Allah. And this shows that the argument that people like to have about reading the Quran just for the mere barakat, which barakat in Arabic it means reward, that you get a special reward for every reading of the Quran. And here Quran, as we say time and time again, means that speech that Allah sent down in Arabic. And this is not to belittle the <clears throat> beautiful translations and the great jobs that the people give in bringing as much as possible the meaning from Arabic to another language, such as English, as they have translation of Quran in English, such as um, French, as they have the meaning of the Quran in French, such as um, Spanish, they have the meaning of the Quran, I believe, in Spanish, such as um, Germany, or German language, I should say. They have the meaning of the Quran, I believe, translated into German. And whatever other uh, languages that they have managed to translate the Quran into, this is not a slight upon the translation, but rather it's a distinction between what is the speech of Allah and what is the meaning of what Allah has sent down. So here when we talk about Quran, whether it means that a person understands the Quran from Arabic reading or he or she understands the meaning rendered into their language, the point here is that it's meant to be understood and not that the person just reads it just to read it. And here, Ibn Kathir makes that statement that the Qur'an, that the Book of Allah is made to gain understanding from, as Allah has said, And here Allah says, asking a rhetorical question. Sometimes Allah asks the question, He uh, poses a question to His creation to get them to think. As they used to say when we were in school, put on your thinking caps. That means stop playing and get serious, pay attention and think. So here Allah says, the meaning in English, asking the human being, <clears throat> do you not um, contemplate or um, ponder upon the verses of the Quran? As this is what the Quran has been sent down for, for contemplation, for direction, for remedy, for that which is a healing from spiritual sicknesses, um, whether it be doubt, which is a spiritual sickness, to have doubt as it relates to the religion. This is a spiritual sickness. To have um, that which is the desire and love to do things that are considered and made clear to be sinful. This is a spiritual sickness. To have that which is um, laziness, which also leads to incapability. This is the spiritual sickness. As you have the type of laziness that comes from fatigue and exhaustion, but you do have a lazy aspect of um, a person being like that in the spiritual sense, as well as that laziness spiritually leads to making you incapable. And we know that the Prophet used to make supplication to Allah against this and this is one of the ways that a person um, fails to succeed whether it relates to worldly gain or religious gain by having laziness and ultimately it connects and leads to incapability so the Quran here where Allah is talking about shows that the Quran is to contemplate and to read as this Quran is not just sent down for an individual to have, but it is to contemplate, to read, 
to look over and to study. And then Allah says, after he mentions, Quran, And do you all not ponder upon, do you all not read and comp, uh, contemplate the Quran? And that same Quran that you should uh, ponder upon and contemplate and examine, if it was from other than Allah, La wajidu fihi ikhtilaf in kathira, then you would have found a lot of misconceptions, a lot of things that are argumentative, a lot of things that have uh, mistakes in it. And this is one of the reasons that Allah sent the Quran, so that we may study it, learn from it, and use it. Wa call Allah wa ta'ala. Kitaba Kitabun Anzanahu Ileka Mubarakan Mubarakan Liat the Debaru Ayati Liat the Debaru Ayati Wayat the Karu Ulul Al Bab Waliat the Karu Ulul Al Bab. Here Allah he mentions about the Quran Kitabun Anzanahu Ileka a book meaning to the Prophet Sallam that was sent down. Kitab on Zalnahu, a book that Allah has sent down. Ilayka Mubarakan, that which we sent to you, O Muhammad, this book, Mubarakan, it is blessed. And here, Mubarakan means that it has special gifts, special um, rewards, special enlightenments, things that are added on top of what normally Allah gives to the human being. So in this book, Allah has mentioned that it is sent down to the Prophet ﷺ, Kitab an that which he, Allah, has sent down. Who did he send it, send it to? The one that he's actually talking to as it's sent down, the Prophet Muhammad. So he says, Ilayka Mubarakan. That we sent to you, meaning, O Muhammad, that that book, it is blessed. In order that they, the people, they would contemplate ayatihi, his signs, his verses. And so that the people of knowledge, <clears throat> it will serve as a reminder for them. Or, so that the people of knowledge, they re would, would remind the other people from this book. They will quote and read from this book, the people of knowledge, to the other people to remind them of Allah's verses. And this is one of the reasons that we have on what's called Jumu'ah. The person comes, he stands before the congregation. And that he preaches the verses of Allah and he reminds them from the verses of Allah on the blessed day of Jumu'ah. Which they say the Friday sermon. وَقَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى Ibn Kathir, he continues to mention verses from the Qur'an showing the obligation of getting an understanding of the religion or studying the religion in order to gain that which is <coughs> knowledge. أَفَلَا يَتَّدَبَّرُونَ Quran. Allah says, and do you, they not reflect, do they not contemplate, ponder upon the Qur'an. So the verse that he just mentioned before that, he started with that same question. Do they not contemplate, do they not think about what they're reading in the Qur'an? Then Allah says in this verse that we're reading the same thing. Do they not reflect? Do they not ponder? Do they not contemplate on the Qur'an? Am ala qulubi 
Or is it that there's a spiritual lock upon their hearts? A spiritual lock upon their hearts. So here, if we were to take the two verses where Allah said, The first one Allah says, Do they not contemplate upon the Quran? Do they not read the Quran? And when they come to a verse about the earth being dead and then Allah resurrects it, when the seasons come, do they not stop and try to imagine the reality of this? As everyone can bear witness, when it becomes winter, all of the leaves on the tree, they fall. And those trees that had moisture in them become very brittle and hard. And they stay like that for a period of time without any life to them. As life is something that you can see moving, evolving, changing and normally life has an attraction to it where something that is dead is as they say yeah this is dry when you talk about wood and things of minerals has no um, substance to it it doesn't show a pretty picture it doesn't evolve it's just there then after a period of time and the rains and the snows and things take place and the season changes as like now, you'll start to see that same wood have some moisture to it. You'll start to see the things on the tree start to bud and come alive. And this in itself is a reflection upon the Quran. If you were to read that verse and then you will stop and try to imagine the greatness of Allah, that he would create something that can live and die, live and die, live and die while the humans only live once and they only die once. Then that next life is for the hereafter. That next life is the standing for your good and bad deeds. While there are some objects on earth, they live and die. They live and die here on earth. And one day they're going to perish and they won't be in the next life. While the human beings in this life, we live once, we die once. Then that next time that you stand, that you actually have life, you will be standing before your Lord on that judgment day. So this is part of reflecting upon the verses of the Quran when you read about the different things in the galaxy and the way that the sun comes without fail from one direction and the day is part of that sunlight. And then the descending of the sun and the going down of the sun follows by the night, which comes with the moon and the stars. All of these things have been mentioned in the Quran so that an individual could ponder, could reflect, could contemplate what's in the Quran. And this is why Allah said, If I like the Debrun of the Quran, do they not think about the Quran? Do they not? put in their minds this issue that they read in order to digest, in order to uh, bring about um, some mental picture of what's happening. That if this was from other than Allah, if the Quran, these words from other than God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, guess what? then they would have found a lot of discrepancy in some of the stuff that they read in the Quran. They would have found misconceptions and mistakes such as the statement that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created unto himself a son. But if you read verses in the Quran, you will find that this is impossible. And because it's the word of Allah, and he bears witness against that accusation that he has taken unto himself a son, then it is clear that this is a misconception. While the Bible itself has been changed, and a person can read a statement about Allah having a son, then he can read after that that he is the one, the Almighty God. Then you can read after that that Jesus, he died on the cross. While you can read after that, and he's the third of the three. And this is nothing but ikhtilaf and kathira. 
a lot of controversy, a lot of contradiction, where when you read the Quran, you don't find anything contradictory. <clears throat> and if it was from other than Allah, then you would find that contradiction. And then Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala mentions, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ أَمْ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِ أَقْفَالُهَا Do they not read the Quran? Do they not contemplate? And there's no way to contemplate except a person has to read the Quran. Do they not contemplate on the Quran? Or is there upon the heart a lock? And here, this is a spiritual lock that won't allow the light to come from the Quran to the heart of the individual. It won't allow a spiritual awakening for the one who reads the book of Allah. And the Prophet wasallam, he mentioned this in the authentic hadith that is collected wasallam, in the Sahih of Imam Muslim where he said Matladina Yath Karu Rabbahu Wa Matladi Lam Yath Karu Rabbahu Kamathlil Hai Wal Mate of Kamal Qad. He said the example of the individual that remembers his Lord and remembering him as a part of contemplating, remembering him as a part of that which is pondering upon him. So the Prophet ﷺ, he mentioned the example of the one, the likeness of the one who remembers his Lord, remembers his favor upon him. So he wants to strive to obey him because of the gratefulness of, his, of the favors that God has given him. He remembers that God, Allah, Tabarakhu wa ta'ala, the one who was the most blessed, the most high, watches and sees all that you do. And that if you disobey him, it's up to him to forgive you. And if you disobey him, it's up to him to punish you. And who wants to take a chance on the punishment of Allah? Who thinks that they can compete with the Almighty? So the Prophet Sallam, he mentioned the example of the one who remembers his Lord versus the one who doesn't remember his Lord is like the one, the example of the individual who was alive versus the one who was dead. So he likened the one who remembers his Lord to one being alive. And we all know how precious life is. And he likened the one who doesn't remember his Lord to the one who is dead. And we know how much we hate death. Wallahi billah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after he mentioned the fact that those who don't ponder, and we mentioned again, the point of pondering goes along with one of the aspects that everybody knows, reading. Reading is not merely just for the sake of earning a reward, as there is a reward for reading Quran, and there is a reward for seeking guidance, but also part of the job of the reader is to contemplate to use it to ponder upon. And this contemplation and pondering is that which en enables a person to increase in their iman, to increase in their faith. So this makes them stronger as a servant to Allah. This makes them more determined to overcome obstacles and to do those things that Allah has commanded. Ibn Kathir, he continues, he says, For the wajib al ulama'i al kashf an ma'ani kalam Allah. So, based on the statement that Allah had mentioned, waliyat al dhakr wa ulul al bab, and so that the people who have knowledge, the people who have gained the knowledge of the religion, they could yani, <coughs> remind those other people. Then Ibn Kathir, he says, based upon these verses of contemplating the Quran and so forth, then it is an obligation upon the people of knowledge to uncover some of the meanings of the speech of Allah. What tafsir dhalik, and to expand upon the meaning of the Quran. What talabahu min madanihi, 
and to seek that Quran from the places or to you know, I need to seek that knowledge, to seek out that knowledge from the places that it lies. What the alimu what the alimu what the alimu nam what the alimu dalika what ta limahu and to learn that Quran, the people of knowledge, and to teach it to others. Kama qala Allahu Ta'ala, as Allah has said, Wa akhadha Allahu mithaq al-ladhina utu al-kitab. And remember, when Allah had took a solemn, or a, 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 he had took a, a covenant, and remember when Allah took a oath from those people of the scripture, utu al-kitab, the people that he gave scripture to. And this normally refers to the nations before us, meaning the Jews or the Christians. That they will make clarity of their book. Who will they make the clarity to? That they will make it clear to the people, the book that Allah has sent them. And that they won't hide the truth. So here Ibn Kathir, he says that there's an obligation upon the people of knowledge to perform the uncovering of the speech of Allah. Meaning, if something comes and you can look at that verse and you can pull benefit from the verse. And this is one of the jobs of the ulama. They take a verse and they might pick it apart. Like if we were to take this verse where Allah said, at the top of the page of Ibn Kathir, he brought it, Afala yatadabbarun al Quran. Do you not contemplate? Do they not contemplate upon the Quran? So that first part of the verse, I can say, Afala yatadabbarun al Quran. Allah is asking a rhetorical question. This shows that Allah, He speaks. But it's not in the verse, but it's implied. This is a benefit you can extract because Allah says, Afala yatadabbarun al Quran. Do they not contemplate on the Quran? So this proves Allah can that Allah He speaks however He wills, whenever He wills, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because He chose to speak in the Arabic language. This is His speech. And then He chose to speak like this to the Prophet Muhammad. Tell it. Then another benefit we can get from that. Is that Allah is trying to get the people to use their brain because he said which to means that a person has to yufekr, he has to think in order to ponder, that's another benefit and then another benefit we can take from this Allah says that he's talking to the jinn and the humankind because there's three types that have intellect, we mentioned this over and over again, there are the angels as Allah mentioned in Surah Tabakr, with Qala Rabbu Kalil Malaika to Inni Jail Fil Adi Khalifa. And when remember when your Lord said to the angels, I am about to create humans. I'm about to create those who will live and dwell on earth. And then they said to Allah, Kalu Ateja Adu Fiha may you see do fiha yes we could the ma'a. Do you mean you're going to put somebody on the earth that's going to cause mischief? Harm, evil, corruption, and they're going to kill one another. So this shows the angels have intellect because intellect allows you to dialogue. So here Allah is not talking to the angels when he said, Afalayya the Debrun of the Quran. And do they not ponder upon the Quran? He's talking about the jinn kind and the mankind. That's another benefit. So the point here is when Ibn Kathir says that it's an obligation upon the people of knowledge to uncover Ma'ani Kalam Allah meanings that come from the book of Allah, then this is what he means. To give the people the broader picture, to give the people so much benefit that there's no way they can turn away from the book of Allah without having a punishment against them. And remember when Allah took the covenant, he took the oath from the people that he sent the book to, meaning the previous nations from the Jews and Christians, that they would make clarity of that book to the people. 
and that they will not hide it, meaning they will not hide the truth that's in that book. And this is one of the reasons Allah has become angry with particularly the Jews, because this is what they did to the Christians. Those people that came that were from their people, Bani Israel, they came after Musa came. Those people from Bani Israel, which Bani means tribe, Israel is a tribe. And the scholars say we shouldn't call that place in Jerusalem Israel. This is political. They say this is not permissible because that's not Israel. They've taken the land of those people in Palestine unjustly. They suffered damn Muslimin. They have slaughtered and painted the land with the blood of the Muslim. And they have raped the women. A'udhu billah. And raped the boys and did all kind of evil. And you say, this is the land of Israel. Israel is a prophet. They were the people of prophecy. They were the people of Ishaq or Yaqub. It goes back to Ibrahim alayhi salam. So to give this name to the land as a way of disgracing the prophets because this name belongs to prophecyhood, Israel. We call it Jerusalem, or we call it Palestine. Don't say the state of Israel. That is the Jews trying to deceive people by using this name to make their claim solidify. One of the reasons Allah Taala ta is upset with them, as He mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah, "Ya ahl al-Kitab, ima al-talbisul haqa bil-baatil wa taktumun al-haqa wa antum ta'lamun." Sorry, that's an Ali Amran. Well, Allah said, "O oh, people of the book," here He's talking about the people of the book again. Why do you mix the truth with falsehood to deceive the people? Why do you mix the truth with falsehood? Why do you deceive the people? And you mix and you hide the truth with falsehood. Why you know better? And then Allah Taala said similarly in Surah Al-Baqarah, "Wala talbisul haqa bil batil wa taktumun al haqa wa antum taalamun." Wa alaykum salam to Allah. And don't Deceive the people. Don't mix truth with falsehood. Why you know better? So one, you have a prohibition, Surah the Baqarah. Then you have Allah asking a rhetorical question to get them to think before it's too late the greatness of the sin that they're doing so they may make repentance to Allah. And this is the way of the Jews. The way of the munafiqeen, those who came to Islam. They became Muslim by tongue but not by heart. And they came inside the ranks of the Muslims from the past generations to make problems. This is their way, to hide the truth, to mix the truth with falsehood. So Ibn Kathir, he brings this verse, and remember when Allah took the covenant of those people from the book that he gave the book to, meaning the Jews and the Christians, that they would make clear that they so shut the on there. And this means that means they have been commanded to make clear the truth. That lamb is lamb amr. They have been commanded that they make clear the truth to the people. That they make it clear to the people. Wala taktumunahu. And that they don't hide the truth. فَنَبَذُوهُ وَرَاءَ ظُهُورِهِمْ وَاشْتَرُوا بِهِ ثَمَنًا قَلِيلًا But instead of putting the truth forward so the people could see this truth, and Allah uses the term, they flung it behind their back. Imagine when somebody wants to hide something, like the guys in Jahiliya when they, on the corner, you walk past them back in the day. They don't do this no more. Today, they puff the cigarette. They puff the marijuana. They puff whatever substance they have, and they blow it in your face. A'udhu billah. They have no respect. If you say, you know, something, maybe the guy might go in his waistband and pull out a handgun and shoot you. This is the time that we live in. But before, back in the days, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, if somebody was smoking something, cigarette, 
marijuana, something they knew that culturally is disrespectful for elders and people of respect to see, he will put it behind his back. How you doing, Miss Jones? Like he's not doing anything. I'm fine, how you doing? Like this. So here Allah uses this same expression about the truth with the Jews, said, and they threw it behind their backs, meaning they didn't give it to the people. They act as if they didn't have it. And then what did they do with that truth? They took that truth and they manipulated it. They took that truth and they used it against the people. They used it in order to purchase a small price. Whatever you use to manipulate somebody in this life, you're only going to get a small portion of goodness. Now, if Allah gave you all of the riches in this world, those riches compared to the riches of the dunya is nothing. It's a small piece of riches. So that gain you get and that luxury and all of this, what they call financial freedom and power and by way of oppressing people, manipulating the religion, that's only a small portion of Allah's milk, of his dominion that he will give to an individual. So Allah Taala said that they took that knowledge, they threw it behind their back. They threw it behind their back and they purchase a small gain. That's why they always tell you two things don't get involved in. Religion and politics. Because it's dirt in both of them. The people put their hands in those two in order to manipulate the people. Then Allah Ta'ala, He says, Habitsama yes to rule. A problem for them as it relates to that which they have purchased. وقال الله تعالى and Allah تبارك وتعالى ابن كثير he continues he says إن الذين يشترون بأهد الله وإيمانهم ثمنا قليلا أولئك لا خالق لهم في الآخرة and those who purchased used the covenant of Allah to buy something. When you purchase, you make an exchange. You give something and you take something. Here Allah is using purchase to show they use something to gain a profit. And sometimes the profit here, that which you benefit, that which you gain is good and bad. As Ibn Taymiyyah, he said, a risk, yanqasimu ila al-kismain. Risk is of two types. Halalin wal haramin. That which is good risk and that which is bad risk. And he mentioned al risku ma yanfa'u bihi kullu ma yanfa'u bihi batin. Risk is considered everything that the body benefits from. So here they use the revelation of Allah to purchase something. They give you something, meaning they twist it and they give it to the people. And then when the people think, oh, mashallah, these are the leaders of religion that have faith and they're sincere. Then when they pass the buckets around, when they say, عندكم, give me what you have for the church, or give the money to the masjid for the sake of Allah, then the people pour their money out, while these people have taken the money in deceit, while they have taken the money and mixing falsehood with truth, they have taken the money to purchase something by the covenant of Allah that they broke. Thamanan qalilan, a small portion again. This dunya is fleeting. This dunya is temporarily here for us to benefit, and it's here today, it's gone tomorrow. If Allah was to give all of the riches to an individual on this earth, it doesn't take from the mulk of Allah one iota. And that which is in this life, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, a dunya man'una. This dunya is cursed. Wa ma fiha, and that which is contained in it, illa al alam, except the alam, wal muta alam, and his students, wa dikr Allah, and the remembrance of Allah. Wa ma fihi, and that which the dikr is in. Everything else maluna, meaning it's worthless. It's not going to last. It's fleeting. It's here today. It's gone tomorrow. No real substance that you can take that you will see in the hereafter. So this is one of the things that 
Allah tabaraku wa ta'ala mentioned in the end, Ulaika la khalaq lahum fil akhirah. That which they got in this life is all they're going to have. Those riches that they love so much, they will not have a share of them in the hereafter. Not a portion. And then Allah tabaraku wa ta'ala said, La yukallimahum allahu wa la yandhuru wa la yandhuru ilayhim yawm al-qiyamati wa la yuzakihim wa lahum a'zaabun alim. On the day of judgment, La yukallimahum allah. Allah won't speak to them. That's a punishment. Everybody wants to see his Lord. Everybody wants to speak to his Lord on that day. This is what we live for, to see Allah. To speak to Allah wa ta'ala. Or to have Allah speak back to you, I should say. Because we can speak to Allah. We speak to Allah by reading the Quran. As the ulama said, when you read the Quran, it's like you're in a conversation with Allah. Because you're reading his, his speech and he's asking you questions and you're reading it. It's like you're in a conversation. Like you say, Afala the Quran. Don't don't they pound, ponder on the Quran? So it's like somebody in a conversation with his Lord. But you want Allah to speak to you on that day. So Allah will not speak to you. Neither will he look at them. Imagine when the parent is upset with the child. The child has really went overboard. Most of the time, the child doesn't even want to look at the parent out of embarrassment. Or the child is looking at the parent to get some mercy, and the parent doesn't want to look at them to show, I'm, I'm disappointed with you. Imagine you're looking at your Lord, and your Lord won't look at you. SubhanAllah. You must be despicable on that day that Allah Tabaraku wa Ta'ala won't look at you, and He loves His creation. What are you, Zaki, Him? And he won't forgive you. Yezeki, yani, that means you got to carry those sins. You're going to get punished for them. La yezeki him. Allah won't wipe your sins away and say, into the Jannah. La bas. No problem. I can forgive that. Go. La yezeki him. And part of yezeki him, as we conclude, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned many hadith of the authentic in Bukhari and the chapter concerning the description of the people of Jannah. The description of the people, Yom al Qiyamah, that everybody would be like Adam was when he was first created. And they said he was like some 14 cubit feet or something, real tall. People became shorter, just as the lifespan became shorter because of the amount of sin collectively on the earth. The more sins became numerated on the earth, like trash becomes piled in the stock. Then the barakat of being tall, living long, having food that's wholesome and water and things to drink that's free from any type of ill effects became different as a punishment. So on that day, Yom Qiyamah, one of the points of being purified is when you find yourself standing and you're tall like the people were back in the time when Adam was created. And the people that Allah didn't forgive didn't purify them. They're going to be small. And imagine you looking up at giants. You're afraid. The sun is already close to you and people are sweating to the point that some narration said some will be up to their necks in sweat. Like you're in a pool or something that's filling up. Your sweat will, 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 will build like that up to your necks. And people will be barefooted, butt naked barefoot. In this life, if you go either one, people are going to look. If you're barefoot, they're going to say, why is he barefooted? Unless you're in the countryside somewhere where that's the norm. If you're naked for sure, people are going to look. On that day, no one will be concerned about, oh, she looks nice. Oh, she has a nice shape. Or, oh, he has muscles. Lot. No one's going to be involved in looking at another, although they're butt foot, I mean, barefoot and, 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 and nude. Uncircumcised, like a person comes out of the womb of his mom, out of the womb of his mother. If Allah doesn't yuzaki him, subhanahu wa rabbil azim. Look what Allah says in the end. Wallahum adabun alim. All of that you're going to be punished. La yukallimahu Allah, Allah won't speak to them. Wala yandhuru ilayhim, neither will he look at them. Wala yuzaki him, and he won't forgive them or purify them for the sins. In the end, wallahum adabun alim. 
humiliating punishment. Or because you hid the truth. Or because you manipulated the religion. You mixed lies with truth to get some gain. To deceive the people. And this from the way of the shaitan firstly. Then secondly, the people of the book. Well, thirdly, al-munafiqeen wal muqtadi'een. Those people that enter the ranks of the Muslims just because. Just to deceive the Muslims because of this. So this is something that Allah Tabarakul wa Ta'ala has warned us against. And Imam Ibn Kathir, he wanted to mention this as it relates to the obligation of the people of knowledge uncovering some of the meanings of Allah's speech. As again, the meanings or uncovered or explain in order to give the bigger picture so that the people will be able to do as Allah has asked. Why don't they, is it not that they ponder upon the Quran or do they have a seal, a spiritual seal on their heart? We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from Ahlul Quran. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who read the Quran. We ask Allah tabarak wa ta'ala to make us of those who yet the debt beru alayha, that we ponder upon the Quran, we think of it, we toss and turn the meanings in order to gain direction. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who act upon the Quran. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbi wa sallam tasliman kathira. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Any questions before the other? Any questions before the other from the people on the phone lines, the pal talk? Any questions from the people on the phone lines? Any questions? Tayyip, inshallah. The Adhan. Barakallahu fiqh subhanak. Allahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha ant astaghfuhu wa antubhu ilayh. Barakallahu fiqh subhanak.